intermittent fasting, keto, starving myself, comparing myself to others, overeating, losing weight, gaining weight, low self-esteem, body dysmorphia, finally feeling healthy, happy, and finding my balance. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Brie and welcome back to my channel. I have got a mug of hot chocolate right now because we are about to get real. So I know that it might be surprising to some of you, but I wasn't just born with the body confidence, fast metabolism, and healthy relationship with food that I have today. No, 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 no. We have come a very long way. So shall we travel back in time to where my health and fitness journey first began? So as a kid growing up, I absolutely loved my food and I think this is probably the healthiest relationship I had with food when I was younger because I would eat whenever I was hungry, stop whenever I was full and I didn't think about it. There was no guilt, there was no body image issues, I didn't have low self-esteem and I certainly didn't restrict myself from food. I think it was probably my love for food that was at fault for me being such a chubby child. I was chubby and held extra weight throughout all of my schooling, through primary school and high school, which also meant that Unfortunately, I was bullied quite a bit. I suppose I knew that they were calling me names to do with my weight, but I didn't really understand that I was any different. I didn't notice that I was bigger than other kids. I didn't see it as a bad thing. So luckily, when I was younger, that never really affected the way that I saw myself. It was around 2009 when I entered my teenage years that I first started to notice that I was a little different to the rest of my friends. I also started to notice at this point that the guys at my school would be showing girls' attention and all of my friends attention that they wouldn't show me so yeah I was around 14 when I really started to compare myself to other girls and that's when I also started thinking more negatively about myself and my body over the years I tried every single fad diet there is I had waist trainers I had the skinny me teas I lived on only salads the juice cleanse diet I even wrapped my stomach in cling wrap whenever I was on the treadmill because I thought that the more that I made myself sweat the more weight I would lose. <sighs> Little did I know all I was doing was dehydrating myself and draining my body of water that I needed. I would walk for hours on end and I even went on Duramine for months at a time twice. But of course, as you can imagine, none of those ever stuck because they are not sustainable. Basically, I would lose chunks of weight doing these fad diets and then after about three months max, I would always give in and go back to my old eating habits. So as you can imagine, after under eating for so long and over exercising, when you go back to doing like the complete opposite of that, all that is going to promote is fat gain. I would take packets of chips to my room, boxes of donuts, blocks of chocolate, bags of lollies, and I would sit in my room and just eat it all. So as you can imagine, those binges would then be followed by horrible guilt and a lot of pain as well. Because overeating it causes your belly to expand past the point that it should be. And yeah, that caused belly aches, that caused me to feel like nauseous. I just wasn't hungry after that for a few days. But then once I was hungry again, I made bad choices. So it was kind of a never ending cycle. So let's skip ahead to 2014. I was 18 and I had just spent the last three months doing a another fad diet, living on basically only salads and over-exercising. And after doing this, I had lost 15 kilos and this was the time that I met my boyfriend, Dylan. So he first met me when I was fairly slim. He had no idea of my history with eating and my struggles with my weight. Um, I had this newfound confidence, so he met me when I was pretty confident. But again, as soon as I was happy with my weight loss, I would just return back to my old eating habits of before. Fast forward to 2018, I had now been with Dylan for four years, I was 22 and I was at the heaviest weight I had ever been in in my entire life. I had gained back the 15 kilos and some. Dylan knew how unhappy I was though. I never felt good whenever we would go out. I would wear really baggy jumpers and long jeans every single day, no matter how hot it was and how much I would be sweating because I just wanted to hide my body. I would turn down invites from friends. I didn't want anyone to see me. Um, I tried to film a few YouTube videos in between this time, but I never liked them enough to upload them. I was worried that people were gonna watch these videos 
and just be thinking about how much weight I'd gained. So I never uploaded them. I was hiding my body from Dylan as well. So after four years of being together and two years of living together, I was still not letting him see my stomach. I would overeat every single day to the point that it would give me stomach cramps. I would go to bed in so much pain. And that brings us to December 2018 when I started my final diet. And I'm calling it this because this really is the last diet that I would ever do little did I know at the time. I started this diet the same way that I always did, under eating and over exercising. I lost the first six to eight kilos this way and I also lost my period at this time too due to the lack of nutrition and energy that I was providing my body with. And that's not all, I also started to lose feeling in my right leg from my foot to my knee until it was completely numb and I could barely even walk on it without collapsing. And this meant that I could no longer run or do any form of cardio because because I couldn't actually feel my foot touching the ground. This really upset me and put me back. Not because of uh, my health issues and that I was worried about my leg and what I had done to get me to this point. I was more worried about the fact that I couldn't run anymore and I didn't want this to affect my ability to exercise and lose weight. So I went to the doctor who sent me to a podiatrist. We did a few tests and I was basically advised to stop running, stop walking, just let my body heal. And with lots of hesitation, I did it. And that's the only thing that helped. Two months into this diet, a nutritionist who I knew personally and saw that I was going through a weight loss journey on Instagram reached out to me. She told me that she was about to launch her very own nutrition and PT company. It is called Execute Fitness. Her name is Courtney. She is absolutely amazing. And Courtney asked me if I wanted to be her very first test client before she launches. And of course, I was hesitant at first being a test client, but I figured I really had nothing to lose. Um, she obviously knows a heck of a lot more about this whole topic and about nutrition and about exercise and seeing results than I do. And everything else I'd tried in the past didn't work. So I may as well just trust her and give it a go. So Courtney went on to teach me a lot, a lot about nutrition, calories, how to track them, and how to eat more and still see results, which absolutely changed my world and is the reason why this was my final diet, the last one I will ever do. I, of course, also went on to do a lot of my own research on calories and how they work, how many calories I should be eating. I did research on metabolism. I did research on every single thing that she brought up with me. I did my own research on just so that it made more sense in my head and so that I just knew a little bit more about it. This information is what I have uploaded a number of videos about because this is what finally worked for me. It's what helped me see results in a healthy way. It's what motivated me to kickstart a healthy journey and completely changed my life and helped me see results the healthy way. I finally understood the method behind losing weight, gaining weight, or maintaining my weight. And I finally had the full motivation that I needed this whole time to keep going and stick it out and live a healthy lifestyle. So anyway, I worked with Courtney for a few months after that. I continued to lose weight and finally, I got to my goal weight and this is when Courtney encouraged me to start working on the maintenance phase of my health journey but I was too afraid to change something that was working so well so I lost more weight and more weight and more weight. This brings us to July last year. I had just returned home to Australia from my trip in the US. I was at my lowest weight and I'll put it to you this way. I now at 23 weighed the same that I did when I was in year three or four. I just remember thinking that losing weight felt like my only goal, like it was my whole life. And it was kind of hard to reset my mind around it. It was as if maintaining or gaining weight was a step backwards and I didn't want to go backwards. I was doing so well. I was losing weight. I understood how it worked and I was making it happen finally. So I just wanted to keep the ball rolling. I didn't want to go back. I would say that at this point I had developed a form of body dysmorphia. I just felt really good being so thin for the first time in my adult life that I never realized how thin and underweight I had actually become. I was so thin 
skin now that you could visually see my ribs, but because I would still bloat after I ate any food, I didn't see myself as too skinny. I kind of figured how can I be underweight if I still have a belly? Wrong. This is so wrong. As much as you can see the girls online that have the abs and the flat stomachs and the toned bodies and the nice butts with the no cellulite, it's just not realistic. I can tell you right now that when I was underweight to the point that I almost was hospitalized, I still had a belly. I bloated. And that is completely normal and it happens no matter what. So if you're striving for a perfect body all the time, you are never going to be happy. So as I became really underweight, family members started reaching out and expressing their concerns that I was too skinny, very underweight, that they're worried about me, that I look sick. But it wasn't actually until someone close to me sat me down told me that they're really worried about me and that they've been in my position before and that they believe that I am developing an eating disorder that I actually reflected on how underweight I'd become on my mindset around food now and how I was so obsessed with seeing the scales drop. So yeah, uh, basically I realized that I didn't really have a choice now. I had to put my health first and I had to gain weight to get my period back. So in August of last year, 2019, um, together with my nutritionist, I started increasing my calorie intake so that I was in a caloric surplus to promote weight gain. I didn't know how much weight I had to gain. I basically just had to keep increasing my food and keep gaining weight until I got my period back and was back at a healthy weight. This was absolutely terrifying for me and I don't think I would have been able to do this on my own, but the fact that I had a professional, a qualified nutritionist by my side encouraging me, just keeping me accountable and on the right track, that really helped me and I wouldn't have been able to do this without her. I did have quite a few breakdowns and Dylan had to console me and just keep me going and let me know that my health is more important and I had to remind myself every day that that was my goal. But on the plus side, I was really enjoying eating more food and I knew deep down that this was really good for me, for my mindset around food, for my health. So it was kind of bittersweet. Um, I really enjoyed it, but I was also really scared at the same time and I just didn't want to undo all of the progress I had made. Over the course of six months, I gained six kilos and I finally got my period back 10 months after I initially lost it. And on the day that I got my period, this is the video that I sent my nutritionist. What? What? Who's excited? Me. I am. Who's healthy? Yeah. I am. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited. What getting my period back represented was my health and I felt like finally my body is functioning the way it should be again and I'm healthy again. Anyway, at this point everything was a little bit bigger but I actually felt so much better now than when I was at my lowest. It had been a full year of just constantly striving towards being less this or more that and I was just so sick of not being happy with myself after so long of working so hard. I actually ended up looking in the mirror one day and I just said, are you happy yet? But when I stood there and looked at myself in the mirror without having these higher expectations of myself, I actually felt really good. I actually felt confident in my skin and happy with the way I looked. And I finally realized that I don't need to gain more muscle or lose any more fat. It's okay to be happy with myself the way I am, even if my body doesn't look like the girls on Instagram or in the magazines. I finally had my period back. I was eating so much more than I had in a long time without feeling guilty. My metabolism was firing. I felt more energized than I had in the past year. So that's when I decided to cut down on the intensity of the exercise I was doing and really just maintain my health, my happiness, my current body and enjoy it and appreciate it. So that brings us to 2020. I'm now 24 and for the last year I have really just been learning to love myself and knuckling down on appreciating my body the way it is. I remember at the start of 2020 I started looking in the mirror and forcing myself to think kindly of myself so I wouldn't even let those negative thoughts creep in as soon as I felt those niggling thoughts focusing on my flaws or things that I didn't like I would just switch it straight away and I would start focusing on the things that I do like or just speaking kindly of the things that I don't like as well I also started posting less posed tense and edited versions of myself online and I just shared more of the real me even shining a light on my cellular 
highlight, my bloating, my rolls. I found that the more I put the real version of myself out there, the more comfortable I became with myself in real life. So I was less concerned about how people saw me in real life. Initially, I started posting these photos um, more to push myself out of my comfort zone and to normalize these parts of my body because if everyone else could see them, then I didn't have to hide them anymore. And I think that doing this has really helped me find my own peace with them and more than that, it's actually helped me grow quite fond of them. I actually think that my cellulite is cute now and totally normal and a lot of us have them and I never look at anyone else's cellulite and think negatively of theirs. So. Why should I think negatively of mine? It's so strange because for 23 and a half years of my life, I have lived with insecurities, low self-esteem, comparing myself to others, always wanting to be more beautiful, more funny. And in the last six months of doing this and really internalizing and focusing on appreciating myself and practicing doing that every single day, my world has completely changed and so is my mindset around food, around exercise, and definitely around my own body image. It is crazy that I can confidently say that I am completely content with my bloating, my rolls, my cellulite, my body image as a whole, and who I am as a person. And that's really all I'm trying to encourage anyone else in the world to do because it has completely changed my life and my happiness, my mindset, just what I feel I'm capable of achieving. All of this negative energy has just been completely lifted from my shoulders and I just wanna help other people to get there as well because you can definitely do it. It is achievable, trust me, if I I can do it you can do it so yeah that is my health and fitness journey and of course it is not over my health journey will be ongoing probably for the rest of my life because I always want to be putting my health first making sure that I'm eating well nourishing my body and staying active so yeah if you want to come along on this journey with me then please reach out anytime I always respond to my Instagram DMs and I always respond to my comments on YouTube so I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that you will check out some of my other videos I have videos on how I lost 20 kilos the healthy and sustainable way. I have videos on how I sped up my metabolism. I've got videos dedicated to healthy, low calorie, high volume meals and snacks to help you lose weight and stay full. I also have stacks of other videos on my channel already and plenty more to come. So I really hope that you'll subscribe to my channel to see my future uploads. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy. And don't forget, if ever you are feeling doubtful or unmotivated, just remember, Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.